12,000 people have signed this and want you to act. So that's my reason for being here today, and thank you very much. Thank you. Senior Mary Joyce Muller could please approach the dais. Our next speaker is Shirley Blair. Welcome. Hi again, everyone. It's uh, good to see you, um, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and uh, Council. Um, for some of you who haven't met me yet, I'm, I'm Shirley Blair, and I'm with uh, Clifton United Methodist uh, Church, representing the larger group of uh, the greater uh, Miami uh, Valley of uh, Methodists. I'm also first generation from uh, the South, and I'm a native uh, Cincinnatian, so uh, this is an issue that's very dear to my heart. I'm, I'm here to request council to support funding for truly affordable housing. It's uh, necessary, equitable, uh, sustainable. It enhances uh, the quality of life, not just for the people who need affordable housing, but uh, just enhances life in, in general. And, and currently, rents are unreachable for many numbers of uh, citizens, and homeless citizens are increasing. Uh, we have over 12,000 uh, signatures on our petitions. Anyway, I uh, just want to say, please act. We need this amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Tyrone Jackson could please approach the dais. We have several new folks in the chamber. Uh, if there's no seating, I, I see a few seats on, on this third floor. There's more seating available on the fourth floor. Uh, our next speaker is Lenore Newland. Welcome. Good afternoon. I'm Lenore Newland. I live in Northside. I volunteer for the Housing and Energy Committee of Communities United for Action. Today is a huge concern for me because I've lived for 40 years in, an, in a city with an affordable housing shortage so dire that it amounts to a public scandal, a scandal that includes seniors living in crumbling homes and apartments, many more who live on our streets and under our viaducts, our homeless. I've watched council after council kick this scandal down the road like a can. Is it really true nothing more can be done, no justice? Thousands of our senior Cincinnatians are worried about repairs for their crumbling homes, about building citations, foreclosures, evictions, and looming homelessness. Thousands more live on our streets eating out of trash cans at constant risk of assault, robbery, freezing in winter, or dying in the intense heat of our summers. The sheer numbers of public agencies, municipal, county, state, and federal, necessary for the care of one homeless person are astounding. They represent a huge investment of public money, taxpayers' money. By contrast, the dollars required to provide stable housing for the poor, elderly, and homeless of Cincinnati are a bargain. I'm here today to tell this council, put an end to years of decaying neighborhoods, sky-high rents, and rampant homelessness. Take a chance. Pass a motion today for a special council meeting Tuesday next. You can secure financing and put the Affordable Housing Trust Fund on this November's ballot. In one move, do it now, today. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Lonneman could please approach the dais. Our next speaker is uh, Senior Mary Joyce Moeller. Hi, um, I'm a Sister of Divine Providence, a member of St. Francis Seraph Parish, also a member of Ignite Peace, Intercommunity Justice and Peace Center. So thank you very much for uh, allowing us to speak to you today. And I too want to ask you to pass that motion today to put uh, city uh, funds for affordable housing on the November ballot. I think we have to see the faces of people who are affected by this issue and not just see the issue in terms of money. Um, I hear of, of companies coming into Cincinnati building uh, apartments that they call affordable, but like many of the other speakers, when you read 
what they're really putting up, they're not affordable to the majority of the people who are making the very low incomes and people who are on our streets. On behalf of the people on our streets, we need to see their faces. I've, I've talked to them you know, every week. I rub shoulders with military veterans who've put their lives on the line, and yet they're on the streets. Um, you know, what, what, what kind of gratitude is society showing for, for the uh, experiences and putting themselves out there? I see people with mental, psychological, physical illnesses on our streets, and they don't have the wherewithal for the money. I see people who've been incarcerated, and that's been spoken to, um, and, and they cannot uh, find a place to live. If, and many people on the streets are working, you know, I don't know, sleeping under bridges or in cars or on the couches of friends, but uh, they, they're paying taxes also. If, if more of them would work, there would be more tax money for the city also. I understand that there are at least 20% of the children in the public schools who Thank are you, homeless. Sister. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Sister, I, I want to apologize. I, I thought SR meant senior. I, I apologize. I understand. Um, if I could have Rachel Zeiler please approach the dais. Our next speaker is Tyrone Jackson. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Tyrone Jackson, and I too am a member of Mark Metropolitan Area Religious Coalition of Cincinnati. Uh, my judicatory is the Cincinnati Islamic Community Center. Um, not only am I, am I its judicatory, but uh, I'm also the agency director for its food pantry. Uh, and as its a director, uh, I deliver food uh, to different uh, peoples and community. And uh, I, I've also visited their homes, and I've seen their homes, uh, shall we say, in, in, in disrepair but basically in basic plumbing and, and, and that type of thing. Uh, very recently, uh, I was delivering food uh, to a, a unit, and it was empty. And I saw one of the people that, that, that I would normally speak to, and I said, well, why is it empty? And he had said that they had been evicted. And, uh, and, 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 I, and, and the thing of it is, just a month earlier, they were there. So I spoke with a, a, another person, and, 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 and he said that, um, that uh, people would prefer to uh, sell units rather than take in uh, uh, people of uh, subsidy. Um, uh, uh, lastly, I, I will share that uh, um, I had had a client, uh, and his last name was Rogers, and uh, I called him Mr. Rogers, and. What he had said to me is that he had been living in a unit for an extended period without heat. And he said to me, he said, don't tell anybody. Because if you tell somebody what they will do, what they may do is shut it down. And he wouldn't have uh, anybody, you know, he couldn't afford it. Thank and you, so. Sir. I, and and I, I accepted that promise, and I only speak of it now Thank you, because sir. he is now deceased. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. If I could please have Reverend Maggie uh, Sheevy uh, come to the mm -hmm. dais. Our next speaker is Bill Lahneman. Welcome, sir. Thank you. My name is Bill Lahneman, and I'm here today with the Democratic Socialist of America and with my new friends here in council chambers today. I'm in the process of retiring after 40 years as a nurse and an educator. My wife and I have a home in College Hill, but for the last seven years, we've been living for most of each year in Washington State, where I was teaching. We never gave up our home in College Hill, though. We figured we'd be moving back to the Queen City after our adventures in Washington, drawn back here by lifelong friends and family and the city that it is. One other factor in our decision to return here was the cost of living. With the median home price here in Cincinnati reported to be around $274,000, the median home price in Bellingham, Washington, where we were, was $635,000.
over twice as much and far outstripping the wages that were a little bit higher on the West Coast. Our daughter still lives in Bellingham and is renting a small house there with her boyfriend and paying $3,000 a month in rent. $3,000. Bellingham's a beautiful place, but um, I don't recommend that Cincinnati follow its example. <laughs> I'm here today because I'm, I'm concerned about my daughter's generation being able to afford a home. The unbridled market left to its own devices is making it very, very difficult for low and moderate income earners to own a home. There, I'm especially concerned for African American families in our community. The rate of home ownership for the African American community is 33%, compared to a white home ownership rate of 73%. And that gap of 40% is one of the worst in the United States. Cincinnati can do better. I love this city. Um, I'm, I'm glad to be back, um, and I'll get to know you all as I reestablish roots here, but please do the right thing and put this on the ballot in November. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. If I could please have Bill Woods approach the dais, our next speaker is Rachel Zeiler. Welcome, Rachel. I'm with Cincy Action for Housing Now, and I'm here to ask you to Rachel, pass... Rachel, could you speak closer to the mic? I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, I'm here to ask you to pass a motion today committing yourselves to put funding for truly affordable housing on this November ballot because we need affordable housing now. I moved to Cincinnati five years ago to start my doctorate, and this weekend I get to walk across the stage and accept my diploma. People, people love to talk about how challenging and stressful grad school is, but I didn't expect housing to be the most stressful and difficult aspect of being a student. I chose Cincinnati because it's more affordable compared to the other cities I applied for school. However, the past five years, I've lived one paycheck away from being homeless, like so many other Cincinnatians. Rent has increased more in Cincinnati than any other major city across the US, and the city's attempts at creating affordable housing do not actually help those who need it most. The housing crisis is a public health crisis. Those experiencing chronic homelessness are at three to four times greater risk of premature death and have a life expectancy less than 50 years of age. Over 500 people have died in Cincinnati within the last six years due to lack of affordable housing, um, not to mention the long list of physical, emotional, and psychological health effects that come with homelessness and housing insecurity. But City Council has the opportunity to change this. Since the Action for Housing Now has collected almost 12,000 signatures of Cincinnatians for a motion to improve access to affordable housing. Council members have the power to put this amendment on the November ballot and give voters the opportunity to start funding truly affordable housing a year earlier and reduce a year of suffering for those in need of safe and affordable housing. Please pass a motion to put funding for affordable housing on the ballot this November. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on your diploma. Uh, could I please have Bill Woods and Reverend Tyler um, Maquin Lee, please approach the dais. Our next speaker is Reverend Maggie Shreve. Shreve, thank you. Shreve, I apologize. Shreve. That's okay. Hello, and thank you for this opportunity. My name is Maggie Shreve. I am a minister in the Presbyterian Church USA. I grew up in Cincinnati, but have not lived here in many years. I came from Chicago last summer. When I arrived, I was sadly disappointed with the state of affordable housing, and I asked a lot of questions to figure out what was being done to increase this type of housing stock. What I learned was also disappointing. It seems to be a chaotic mess, requiring sponsors from multiple sectors of city life to get anything new built or rehabbed. I'm thinking specifically of Melrose Place as an example. This city needs a long-term commitment and plan for building and renovating properties for low-income and moderate-income individuals and families. I support the increase in the earned income tax of Cincinnati because I haven't seen any other effective options being offered. The Affordable Trust Fund, Affordable Housing Trust Fund has next to nothing in its account, and you all know that this needs money to happen. As our political leaders here in Cincinnati, you should and still can take on this task of creating sustainable funding streams to create affordable and accessible housing options here. I've spent 50 years of my life advocating for the rights of people with disabilities to live where they want in the neighborhoods of their choice. Given my experiences in Massachusetts, Kansas, Missouri, and Illinois, Cincinnati is pretty behind on this as well. 
So when are you all gonna step up and take the challenge? This is a systemic need. So show some courage, start the planning and the funding so that Cincinnati can be truly a model city in the 21st century before 2030. Thank you. Can I please have Robert Park approach the dais? Our next speaker is Bill Woods. Welcome, sir. Hello, I'm Bill Woods of Applied Information Resources, a nonprofit here in Cincinnati. I'm happy to be here with so many other colleagues who are urging you to vote to put this on the ballot as city council, even though we have the 12,000 signatures to do that. It would uh, shorten the time it would need to get to this critical issue of affordable housing. I'm also a little sad to be here. At the age of 47, my nonprofit was hired in 19. 1986 to do the first homeless study here in Cincinnati. Already, affordable housing was an issue, a crisis. The Reagan administration had cut housing to the bone during that period. Since then, federal housing has picked up some, but not nearly as much. And so the crisis has gotten much, much worse. So here I'm back at the age of closing in on 84, 36 years later saying it's time the city step up to the plate and really address this issue and I hope you will do that. Thanks Bill. If I could please have Michael Flood approach the dais. Our next speaker is Reverend Tyler. Um, could you let Mo me know? Mo Quinn Lee. Mo Quinn Lee, welcome. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tyler Moquin Lee. I'm the pastor at Gloria Day Lutheran Church on the west side of Cincinnati. Um, I'm asking you today to commit to funding for affordable housing on this November's ballot. The need is now, and this is a really easy way for us to take a step forward to positive change. It's really, honestly, the least that can be done. As a leader of the faith community, justice and equity is deeply important to me and to my faith. And today, one in three people cannot, in this city cannot afford the homes that they live in, and many are only a paycheck away from experiencing homelessness. We know that access to affordable housing and to resources are always beneficial to a community. Uh, it's a way for us to decrease crime rates, to increase economic prosperity and wealth, and it's an important way for us to work towards repairing the deep divides that exist in the, uh, in the fabric of our society, uh, whether particularly towards racial justice, uh, those who are immigrating to our great city, the formerly incarcerated, and the LGBTQ youth who are so often disowned by family and have no place to go. We know that societies are judged by how they treat their most vulnerable. So make a decision today that will allow us to look back with pride at our city and its leadership. This is a crisis now. Let's fix it now. Stop favoring developers and predatory landlords. People, human lives are always more important. Thank you. If I could please have Robin Wright Pierce approach the dais. Our next speaker is uh, Robert Park. Welcome, Robert. Good afternoon. I'm Robert Park. I'm a retired public health researcher, and I'm a member of the Democratic Socialists of America. The affordable housing crisis is about more than housing. It's about the distribution of income and wealth. It's about the public policy environment in which zoning, building code, tax incentives, subsidies, and other aspects of civic administration determine what kind of development happens. Not addressing these broader issues means not fixing the, the housing problem. It is only going to get worse as the concentration of wealth increases even beyond what we have seen in recent years. Absent fundamental reforms, living wage employment will be increasingly lacking as, for example, technology like AI uh, upends our economy or with the consequences of climate change, not to mention funding endless wars. Even the AI bosses are worried. It's like when parasites are too successful and they kill the host organism. These problems will be fixable when elected officials and administrators are committed to economic justice in both employment and urban development and have the courage to take on private capital. 
or at least recognize that it's time to recalibrate our system to a better, more sustainable balance. Our political system seems not to favor democratic control of basic economic policy, but it's not too late. The council needs to support the charter amendment funding affordable housing for those really struggling within the current system. Thank you. Thank you. Simon Powell, could you please approach the dais? Our next speaker is Michael Flood. Welcome, sir. Affordable housing is a health care issue. My name is Michael Flood. I am here to tell you to put funding for the affordable, affordable Housing Trust Fund on the November ballot. As a visiting nurse, I witnessed the gamut of housing available in our city from the most expensive to the poorest. The patients that stood the best chance of recovering their health lived in safe, clean housing, whether it was market rate or affordable subsi subsidized housing. I visited people in lower income neighborhoods who lived in well-maintained affordable housing and these people tended to take better care of themselves and reach their goals more consistently. Those who lived in the substandard housing had to deal with other issues that prevented them from focusing on their health. This city has an obligation to provide more affordable housing to help our most vulnerable neighbors live in safer, cleaner housing that is affordable across all income levels. Those with sufficient incomes can afford to provide for themselves those living on limited incomes need our help. Additionally, I worked in inpatient psychiatry and see almost daily many of these patients I took care of who are now living on the streets. These people have an even greater need due to their multiple obstacles. We need to not only house them safely, but also to provide the supportive services they need. Let's start by funding the trust fund to house our neighbors, then provide the additional services they need to thrive. Thank you. Can I please have Sarah Baker approach the dais? Our next speaker is Robin Wright Pierce. Welcome, Robin. Hey, y'all. Um, so like my uh, friends and colleagues here, I am here today on behalf of Beloved Community Church to ask you all to pass a motion today committing yourselves to taking the steps necessary to put funding for truly affordable housing on this November's ballot because we need housing now. Um, instead of sharing a story of why, you all know why, you know the need. I, I followed and donated to many of your campaigns, supported you all um, because you ran on this platform. And so today instead I want to um, just acknowledge that what we are asking you to do is not easy. It requires courage. The issues surrounding housing supply and affordability are not simple. They are complex issues um, and complex problems requ requires courageous and bold action. It takes courage to put a tax levy on the ballot. No one wants to be the administration to raise taxes. We understand that. It takes courage to say to your constituents that you need each of them to put in a small amount um, in order to benefit the whole of our city. And so I'm here because I believe that among you are folks who have that courage, that sitting across from me right now are folks who are brave enough to pass this motion and help us to generate the funding we need to fill the gap in housing. This will not only help with housing, it will create jobs. This will help create wealth for black developers, small developers who need these resources to get into the business of development, to build their own portfolios of wealth and to do so while providing affordable housing. And so this is about economic justice, racial justice, and this is for me about love and action. Thank you for your time. Could I please have Ella Adams approach the dais? Uh, our next speaker is Simon Powell. Welcome. Hi. My name is Simon Powell. I'm a Northside resident and member of DSA, Democratic Socialists of America. Um, the response by elected officials here needs to be really urgent and enthusiastic so we can get this thing on the ballot. 
in November. I'm echoing everything everybody else has said here today about affordable housing. It all rings true. We've been saying it for years. The crisis is getting worse. And the amendment being proposed would cost the average Cincinnatian no more than $11 a month on average, while generating tens of millions of dollars for affordable housing. That's a small cost for an incredible step toward affordable housing in our region that the entire nation could then look to as an example of how to begin pushing back against the trend of unaffordability that's been getting worse now for generations. And I've sat here and heard people up here on city council, council members talk about how perfect can't be the enemy of good, but it's also true that at a certain point, being that conventionally practical in that way becomes the enemy of being effective at all. And it also becomes a life sentence to suffering for those in our city who are confined to living on the margins, which is created by and fostered by sluggish policy. And what the people of Cincinnati need right now is bold and energetic solutions for affordable housing, and we can start doing that right now. Thank you. Thank you. Can I please have Candace Ollie approach the dais? Sarah Baker is our next speaker. Welcome, Sarah. Hello, thanks for having me. Um, so my name is Sarah Baker and I'm a physics teacher at UC. And I wanted to share a story about how affordable housing is affecting me now. A few months ago, my mom had a disagreement with her landlord and she was kicked out of her apartment. Um, so uh, helping her move out, we got her lined up with a new apartment, but it happened to be a, a rental scam. So with all of her stuff, she had to move into my, into my apartment that night. And she lives in my living room, and we've been looking uh, for months now to find an affordable house for her apartment. Um, the funny thing is, is that I just hadn't looked in so long for apartments, and either the ones that are maybe like the lowest price for a one bedroom at 625, there's like no more of those, and they're snapped up really quick. And if you don't have like, if you don't look good on paper, then you're really not going to get those. So the ones that are mostly available are from like 800 to maybe $1,200. But I just wanted to say that that was my personal story and that's how it has affected me and that there is a need for housing. And please put it on the ballot and you can vote for it now. Thank you. Thank you. We can have Candace Ali and also Dylan Bauer, approach the dais. Ella Adams is our next speaker. Welcome, Ella. Hello, my name is Ella Adams. And uh, my story is in my community, in my neighborhood, I know people that have jobs and they can't afford a home. And uh, they're suffering from housing insecurity. And uh, we need affordable housing now. <laughs> Ellie, you, you still have more time. Would you like to say anything else? No, not really. I just wanted to say that the people that's working every day, they can't, can't continue to do this if they don't have stable homes. It's a very serious issue. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Dr. Linda Wolf could approach the dais. Uh, Candace Ollie is our next speaker. Welcome, Candace. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, thank you for your service and for the opportunity to share with you today. My name is Candace Ollie. I come to you today as an increasingly concerned citizen of our great city and share my support with many here today for you and, and for you in passing a motion today to put funding for truly affordable housing on this November's ballot. Your help today is the difference between someone experiencing homelessness, accessing affordable housing right now, or having to wait another 12 months. You have 12,000 voters already behind you and with you. That's half or to, to two thirds of the votes that supported each of you being elected into this office. We are here with you on this. My husband and I moved to this great city in 2019. Just a year later, we watched and supported many of you as you launched your campaigns. They were some of the most difficult months, as I'm sure you can remember, in 2020 and 2021. 
but we still knocked doors and invested our time and money and encouraged friends and colleagues to vote for you because we believed and still believe in you as people who know and hear the city that you represent. Most of you spoke passionately about your vision for bringing change to this growing affordable housing crisis. You shared detailed support for prioritizing home ownership, renter's equity programs, and the like. Some of you were just with Senator Brown on Monday talking about how corporate interests are further pushing families out of accessing already depleted affordable housing options. Councilmember Lemon Kearney, I was moved by you sharing that Cincinnati, its rate of home ownership is far below the national average, especially for low and moderate income families, and that the lack of access is preventing families from building generational wealth through home ownership. Councilmember Parks, I think you said it best though, that it's time to get serious about affordable housing. The budget just passed while a star includes less than 1% specifically designated toward affordable housing, rather than a piecemeal response, help us create a 40 to $50 million solution. Thank you. Thank you. Could I please have Andrew Dennis approach the dais? Our next speaker is Dylan Bauer. Welcome, Dylan. Hi. My name's Dylan. I'm here today to ask that you put, pass a motion to put truly affordable, or truly affordable housing on the ballot in November. This will help us to avoid the heavy burden of campaigning for two separate votes when we've already done the heavy lifting of collecting over 10,000 signatures. On November 29th, 2022, Mayor Perival stated in an interview that he believes our country can expect inward migration due to climate change as people look for cheaper and safer places to live and that our region in particular has the strength of being climate resilient. I ask, how can we be a safe and cheap alternative for people when we lack the ability to be an affordable city for the people who are currently already living here? In the past 10 years, I've seen drastic changes in the prices and demographic of my neighborhood in particular, especially through the pandemic, the increase of remote work, and the rise of short-term rentals. Houses around me are selling or renting for triple the cost of what they did not that long ago. The house that I bought six years ago is no longer in my own price range. Um, now, while those prices might seem reasonable to people moving here from cities that are historically high cost, it's already forced too many of my friends and my family away from the places that they've called home. I'm asking you that you make this motion to help the people who are already here and the people who are already struggling to stay. Because if we have the time to proclaim a Taylor Swift day, we have the time for us. Thank you. Please have uh, Reg uh, DYCK approach the dais. Um, our next speaker is Dr. Linda Wolf. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you. My name is Dr. Linda Wolf. I am a retired school principal, retired uh, assistant professor at the University of Cincinnati, where I taught in the Department of Leadership and Administration for principals and superintendents. I'm here to, you've heard so many voices today, I'm here to raise one more. Cincinnati has one of the highest rates of poverty for children in the United States. Our children in Cincinnati are making one of the highest rates of poverty in our nation. When, and I wanna say this, your goals are great. I don't want you to accomplish them without knowing the impact of what is also happening. When you are taking buildings to renovate and evicting people, once people get an eviction notice, they are not any longer allowed housing support. And those children of those families are plunged into poverty. One of the things I studied my doctorate degree was personal leadership. You have the skills when you study administration. Personal leadership, the highest level, leads with all the skills of administration, but is driven by compassion also. I want you to reach into yourselves, hear these voices, and lead this city forward with compassion too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may I please have Brendan uh, Foe, F-A-U-X, approach the dais. Andrew Dennis is our next speaker. Welcome, Andrew. 
Uh, is that not you? Oh, I'm sorry. Is Andrew Dennis here? No? Okay. If Andrew, if anyone knows Andrew and he comes, please get my attention. I'll put his card here. Um, if I could please have Clara Conover approach the dais. Uh, our next speaker is Reg. My name is Reg Dyke. I'm a member of the Democratic Socialists of America and part of the coalition that's brought all the people here to speak for one, uh, one issue with one voice. I was interested to see that the new state budget includes $100 million for moderate income housing. When uh, Governor Devine, DeWine explained his rationale, why, uh, it was that there was, we've spent so many million dollars, hundreds of million dollars, in investing in bringing corporations to Ohio, and now those uh, factories that are being built need workers, and the workers don't have homes, and thus uh, the money for the middle-income housing. No mention was made of the Ohio's 450,000 citizens with extremely low incomes who also need housing. They don't become the well-paid workers at those new factories. It's not efficient to support them, apparently, in the legislature. And I think Cincinnati's budget has had the same failing. It wasn't that many months back when the majority of the council, not all the council, but the majority, decided not to put money aside in a fund that would support low-income people, people making 30% 30, uh, 30 of AMI or less. The reason given in council was that it was more efficient to, to subsidize moderate uh, income housing there. Well, of course, it's never efficient to support the people at the bottom of the economic hierarchy in society. And that's why we need to socialize human needs so that we together, through our city tax system, can provide stable housing for all members of our city. We need a city tax structure that supports everyone so all of our citizens can flourish. And that's why our coalition collected 12,000 signatures for an affordable housing ballot initiative. You as a council can join us in this, or you can fight against it. But either way, we're in it for the long haul. It uh, this initiative is going to change the status quo of affordable housing. It's also going to change the political status quo when it passes as well. Thank you. Thank you. Would Andy Karenbauer please approach the dais? Brendan Foe is our next speaker. Thank you. Uh, my name is Brendan. I uh, have lived in, or I'm 37 years old, and I've lived in Cincinnati for 32 of them. Um, like many here, I'm here to ask that this council put the uh, affordable housing amendment on the ballot in November. Before, uh, just this year, I got married and bought a house, but before that, I rented, and the vast majority of everyone I know, my friends and acquaintances and coworkers, still rent. Um, the only way I was able to afford a house was two deaths in my family, and even then I had to uh, partner up with my brother so we, we would have enough money for that house. Um, I think of this, in June there were all those headlines that other people have mentioned about how Cincinnati's the fastest uh, growing city for rent in the country, but that June this council also voted 810 to approve uh, or to legalize accessory dwelling units in this city, uh, ADUs, which are essentially just allowing a single family home to rent out basements and attics and whatnot. And the idea that that's proposed is a serious solution to some of the housing crises we s see now, instead of funding the affordable housing fund, seems ridiculous to me. Uh, I'm sure many people here remember that over the last few years, three members of this council were arrested on corruption charges and convicted relating to selling their votes to real estate developers. I'm not saying that any of the sitting members here are corrupt, but when I see things like ADUs that favor uh, Airbnbs proposed over funding the housing fund, it does not invite favorable comparisons. Uh, whether or not there's corruption on this council or not, it's immaterial if the end results are the same. Please vote and put this on the ballot and show and dispel to the people of the city that the idea that you serve the interests of real estate and not the needs of your citizens. Thank you. Uh, if I could please have Liz Gottmer approach the dais. Our next speaker is Clara Conover. Welcome, Clara. Thank you. Um, hello, City Council. My name is Clara Conover. I'm with Peasley Neighborhood Center in Over the Rhine and a rising senior and student organizer at Miami University. I'm here today to tell you to pass this incredibly important motion. 
As a student of urban planning and a justice seeker, I firmly believe, as do everybody else in this room, um, that housing is a human right. We're being approached today by the 12,000. 12,000 people, 12,000 hands, 12,000 signatures and voices here once again to not only inform you of a need's urgency, but the power of the people and the presentation of an alternative. As a soon-to-be college graduate and Cincinnati and since birth, um, I went to Mount Notre Dame High School, and I'm at Miami now, um, I'd want nothing more than to return to my home city. I'd like to echo the voice of this movement. Rent is too damn high. Over $1,000 for a studio apartment is ridiculous, and not everyone can afford that. The issue is a lack of an alternative, and we've come together to place a solution in your hands. The people of the city, including your voters, are watching you in this critical moment. City Council, why not let them decide by putting this on the ballot? Save us a year's time. I'd like to be back in my home city a year from now, but that requires a set of keys and a roof, coming at costs that I, among many, in much more dire circumstances, can't afford. This issue is urgent, the solution is realistic, and your vote today directly impacts the lives of all of us gathered here today. Pass the motion. Thank you. Salah Shorthouse, please approach the dais. Uh, Andy Karenbauer, welcome, you have two minutes. Thank you. My name is Andy Karenbauer and I'm with Peasley Neighborhood Center and I'm also a student at Miami University. I'm here to tell you to pass a motion today committing yourselves to putting funding for truly affordable housing on this November's ballot. I'm thankful that I have the ability to be here today to speak with you, but there are many more who can't be here today because they have to work to pay the rent that they can't afford. I'm not a native Cincinnatian, and in fact, I've only been here for about two months, but I already feel a love for this city that I have not felt before. This love doesn't come from the development, but from the people who fight every day for everyone's basic human rights, including truly affordable housing. The people of Cincinnati can't afford to live in Cincinnati. You have the power to change that today, now. It is possible. It would cost most households only, or less than $11 a month, but would bring in 40 to $50 million every year for truly affordable housing. It's possible, but I implore you to try not to think about what it's going to cost you, but instead think about what it's going to mean to the people of Cincinnati. Thank you. Thank you. May I, may I please have Joelle Newman approach the dais? Our next speaker is Liz Gottmer. Welcome, Liz. Thank you. Uh, yes, my name is Liz Gottmer. I work at Peasley Neighborhood Center. Um, more than five years ago, in the face of increasing gentrification and displacement in Over the Rhine, my coworkers at Peasley began doing a ton of research on nas national best practices in responsible and equitable development. Along with hundreds of community members from all across Cincinnati's 52 neighborhoods, they had a ton of dialogue about what Cincinnati residents need built in their neighborhoods. Spoiler alert, it's not more luxury condos. They agreed that it was not enough for development projects to create short-term construction jobs or part-time retail jobs. The job creation that city leaders always touted was not enough on its own to justify such rampant for-profit development. Together, Peasley and the community carefully crafted the equitable development rubric, which, rather than handing out tax abatements like candy to maximize developers' pro profits, 